Welcome back to the Audible. I'm John Kinjemi, and I'm glad to be joined by Dolphins cornerback Tony Lippett. We're back here on the Audible and uh, the training camp edition, Tony. This is getting pretty good for the Miami Dolphins, for the fans, for the players, and everybody really excited about training camp. And today was a little bit different because you guys went full pads and you were probably tackling to the ground for the first time in training camp. That usually means more intensity. It usually means it's uh, a little bit tougher in the trenches and even on the outside at the corner at your position. Take us through the practice. It was uh, a little overcast, which is probably a break for you guys after the heat of the first four days of training camp. But take us through today and what it was like for you. Um, today was good. It was a grind for all of us out there competing, you know, first time really putting full pads on. And we have live periods out there. And um, we're just basically trying to, you know, continue to get each other better, compete every play every day. And, um... Basically, you know, just try to keep it moving forward. You know, tackling to the ground in training camp isn't uh, revolutionary. You know it's coming. You know it's going to be there sometime, and the Dolphins are going to practice and, and scrimmage at Hard Rock Stadium, probably a little bit more controlled uh, scrimmage than it was today, but it's very similar in certain aspects. What does it mean for a defensive back that's been going up against the same group of wide receivers for four days? It kind of sends the needle uh, towards the end of the red, into the hot button, where you guys are getting after it a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, going against the same guy every day, it's going to be frustrating a little bit. But, I mean, it's, it's kind of still new to us right now. It's just day four. Uh, I mean, practice five right now. So we don't really get on each other's nerves like that as much right now. But I'm sure later in training camp, you know, we're going to be competing at a high level and uh, competing against each other every day and probably get on each other's nerves a little bit from time to time. So. Now, there's got to be a playbook for defensive backs, how, how you guys trash talk. Because it goes back and forth, right? It's just not that everybody, Sam Madison, a good friend of mine, former great Dolphin corner, he's always known as a talker. What are you like on the field? Is it more your actions and a little bit of chirping, or how does that go for you? I mean, I don't really talk too much. I just try to go out there and play and focus in and communicate with my teammates as much as I can to get everybody going and to get myself going as well. So I wouldn't probably say I'm not a talker like that. I'm just, I just kind of play. But I mean, I can talk if somebody's trying to, you know, talk junk to me and things like that. So. <laughs> well, how's it been going on the cornerback side? I know you got a, a new defensive coordinator in Matt Burke. Uh, you guys do a lot of press, a lot of man coverage on the outside. Uh, Byron Maxwell, Xavier Howard finally healthy, yourself healthy. You guys got a lot of competition at the cornerback spot. And is that something that Adam Gase, your head coach, kind of preaches uh, before training camp daily? It's about that competition trying to make each other better. Yeah, competition makes the whole group better. It makes... X better, me better, Max better, all the way down you know, to the last player, period. I mean, it makes all of us better. Competition is always good in our room and in any room on this team. Competition, it builds character. And that's what we're trying to do, build character throughout this team and you know, try to uh, continue to just have our chemistry with each other go up. And as we go on through training camp, the long days and the long nights and things like that. So we're just all trying to stick together and continue to get each other better. You know, I've been watching practices for five days now, and you guys going up against Kenny Stills and Devontae Parker and Jarvis Landry and, and some of the new talent on the outside. It seems like Devontae Parker's game has raised to a different level. And that, you could probably tell us a little bit more because you're going against him and Kenny Stills, but specifically Devontae. What is he doing differently in this training camp that is making him more difficult to guard? I'll probably say he's 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 healthy. He's feeling good about himself. He understands the playbook. He understands, you know, um, what what are we trying to get out of him? And he's just going and catching the ball. He's going up and getting the ball and things like that. He's he's becoming that dominant wide receiver that we need. And um, he's basically using his side because I mean you can't teach size and things like that. And he's one of you know the biggest receivers on the team and things like that. So he's using that to the best of his game and um it's helping him. It's helping him a lot. Dolphin fans, remember you can send your questions via. Periscope at the bottom of the page, and we've got one from Rhino for you, Tony. He says, my first time at practice, Tony, who won the day today, offense or defense? And I know that's that's an easy question for you. <laughs> I mean, we all just trying to get each other better out there. I mean, we have um, a lot of competition drills and things today. And um, I'll probably say, I mean, it was probably a tie. It was probably a tie. It was first day of full, full pass, and we was out there thudding and tackling live to the ground, and it was just a great atmosphere out there, you know, put the pads on for the first time since, you know, the Steelers game and things like that, and just to get it rolling again. So 
I probably say we both, you know, we both had our times today. Yeah, it seemed to me it was it was a little bit of back and forth. Mike T, Mike Michael Thomas had a nice interception in the red zone against Ryan Tannehill, and then we saw finally on the outside Julius Thomas connect with Ryan Tannehill for a nice pass down field and looked like it might have been a score. So there was a little bit of back and forth. It was tough running in between the tackles. The defense thought I thought did a really good job at the point of attack. Another question via Periscope is from Fergie Ferg. Are the players excited, Tony? When you actually get to wear full pads in a practice? Um, yeah, I mean, you don't get to wear them that much in practice in the NFL, you know, according to the, I mean, due to the, like the CBA and the new rules and things like that. But when we get out there in full pads, I mean, it's like a game. You know, we play, play the game in full pads. We don't play the games in shells or in uppers and things like that. We play in full pads. So it's always good to get out there from time to time in full pads and compete against each other, you know. Just try to get each other better throughout that day. And, you know, you, you can't always go in full pads because you don't want to uh, – leave yourself open for, for that injury because you guys go at a, at a high rate of speed and, and they're, they're all going to be collisions. This is a violent sport, so you don't want to be in pads a lot, but you have to get used to being in pads, I would guess. But easing into practice and easing into training camp was a li- probably a little bit more difficult, I would think, this year just because of the heat. I mean, that, that the sun was yeah. out, the humidity was up, and you guys got after it pretty good. You guys are practicing where you're trying to stay off the ground in those situations, correct? Yeah, yeah. We're trying to stay off the ground as much as we can, keep everybody healthy and things like that when we're not going to the ground. So basically, Coach always say, you know, you got to learn how to practice. You got to learn how to practice. You got to learn how to carry your pads. You got to learn how to practice without pads because it's – is not going to do anything but make you and your teammates better. So. Another question uh, via Periscope. Tony, who's the biggest jokester on this football team? Are there a couple? I I, I could it. probably say I think Damien Williams is going to be somewhere in that mix, <laughs> but you can give your opinion as well. It's a couple. I'm going to say X for sure. Oh, X, really? X, yeah. X, I, see, X. he doesn't come off. Xavier Howard doesn't come off X been, a, as a as a jokester to me. X has been joking since the day he walked in this, in this okay. building. Okay. You got Branch, Branch joke all day. Basically, X and Branch, X and so Branch. The, are so two the jokes. defensive side. So maybe it isn't Damian Williams. Dam, Dam, Damian, he a jokester too, but Branch and X take it to a whole nother level. What is what is Branch do? Because he doesn't strike me. Those two guys don't strike me as guys that they seem like they're more to themselves. But when in the locker room, are they completely different? No, they they not more to themselves. They team guys. They just no. They just keep the uh, locker room live. You know, keep it active and keep with the new jokes and the new music and things like that and dance and all kinds of stuff it's just it the atmosphere just be live in the locker room and they are definitely like the head here's that. here's another good question from christopher he says tony what's the biggest difference in this team so far i know you've only been together for five practices than other dolphin teams now you don't have a whole lot of history to go on but maybe from last year to this year, what's the biggest difference in this? I'll probably say team? we are a year in under you know Coach Gates and how he wants things to be ran and how he prepares and how he you know he interacts with the players, and interacts with the coaches, and the whole atmosphere of the whole building. I feel like last year was an introduction, and now we're kind of you know adapting to really what he want to do and how he do how he goes about things, and we're kind of you know trying to live through that, live through him. How important is it, Tony, from from a player's perspective, to know that? That head coach, he's getting his message across, but you guys have his back because of that shared respect that you have from coach to player and player to coach. He said it again. Uh, how, how, how do you feel about the message that Adam Gase gives you? Because you have to have that respect level, and it seems like he communicates very well to the players, and the players kind of take that message and go on their own. Like, How does that feel for a player to have a coach like that? It feels good, man, always having a player's coach that'll come to you and talk to you about anything, and he's not not scared to hear your opinion on certain things and certain aspects of the game or certain aspects of how the team is going or scheduling and things like that. He's always open to a lot, and that just makes you trust him and believe him a lot more, you understand? And... Us as players, it kind of bounce off us as well. I mean, we hear from him, and then we'll go around, you know, we'll talk about it and things like that, and we'll just see his vision, and we're just trying to live up to it. And does that feed down through the coaching staff? It seems like this is a good group to work for, your coaching staff. Yeah, I mean, they, they all got a, a little bit of Coach Gates in them. Um, mm-hmm. Positivity, you know, let's keep pushing, let's keep grinding, you know, don't make too many excuses, try to use all of um the things we have against us, try to use it, you know, to make us better as a team and as a unit. And as an organization, so that's basically it. Tony, lastly, I, I want to know your goals. 
I, I know your team goals is to go out and win every game. You know, that's what you're here for. You win. You're here to win championships. But Tony Lippett trying to get better from last year to this year. It seems like you progressed throughout the season, got your hands on a lot of footballs last year, uh, being able to to be counted on. What are your goals for 2017? My goal is just continue to get better every day. I mean, continue to get better every day. You know, make plays out there every day as much as I can. Continue to compete. That's just what I'm trying to do. Just take it one day at a time, not let the moment get too big, anything like that, and just um, you know, just continue to grind. I feel like grinding hard work will lead me where I need to be. So that's what I'm gonna continue to do. Well, Tony, good luck uh, the rest of the training camp. We hope you have you back here on the Audible. We'll be back, by the way, on Wednesday around 10:30. Kim Bocamper will be back in the big chair uh, hosting the Audible. But Tony, we want to say thank you for for joining us today, and uh, good luck the rest of training camp. Thanks for having me on Audible. I appreciate you got it, it buddy. Good All luck right. to you. Yes, sir. That was Tony Lippett, Dolphins cornerback, and uh, happy to have him today on the Audible because you get that player's perspective of what they go through during a training camp, how intense, how the intensity kind of gets to another level when you wear full pads for the first time. And another question via Periscope from Eddie Sanchez. Uh, the question is, what, are, what do the new receivers and who has looked good as a new receiver? And that, that's very easy for me watching practice over the last five days. Uh, you got to say Devontae Parker, he's not a new receiver, but he is to me the way he's been playing over the last five days, the way he looked through OTAs. He's bigger. I think he's stronger. And, and he's finally healthy for the first time. So that gives the Miami Dolphins <clears throat> another weapon on the outside. He can use his height. He can use his size <clears throat> and his catch radius. And I think that's the biggest thing for the Miami Dolphins and Ryan Tannehill in this passing game. You know that you can count on Jarvis Landry for those tough catches, those yards after catch opportunities that he gives you. You know you have a deep threat on the outside and Kenny Stills. He led the football team with nine touchdowns last year. Explosive plays of 40 or more. That was Kenny Stills. But Devontae Parker, if he can raise his game to the next level, I think this passing game is going to consistently improve for Ryan Tannehill and make it a little bit easier for the running game to stay on track and to and to really get people off the line of scrimmage to make it easier for the Miami Dolphins to run the football. New receivers, I think that's pretty good too. Leonte Carew, <clears throat> excuse me, is a guy that is improving his skill set. He's a strong bodied receiver that seems to have dropped a little bit of weight. Last year he was around 222 pounds. Now he's down to 212. He told the South Florida media yesterday his goal is at 208. He looks faster. He's coming in and out of his breaks much better. And he's catching the football not only on the inside where he's probably more suited, but on the outside because of that loss of weight. He seems to get off the line of scrimmage with a little bit more ease and creating a little bit more separation for the quarterbacks to deliver the football. One newcomer I, I thought is having a, a great cramp, a camp is Drew Morgan, a rookie out of Arkansas. This is a guy that's a slot, pure slot receiver, but he's catching everything that has been thrown his way. So I really like the way that this Wide receiving group is, is coming into formation. It looks like you're going to have your big three in Devontae Parker, Jarvis Landry, and Kenny Stills. But Leontae Carew is slowly moving in to that number four spot, which I think is, is suited for him because you're going to have to count on some of these guys on special teams, and then you're going to have you know Rashawn Scott when he gets back healthy. It'll be an uphill climb for him. Drew Morgan's one of those guys, and Malcolm Lewis. And I haven't even mentioned Jakeem Grant, who looks a little bit better as a wide receiver, and he's going to have have to uh, come through and give you something at the wide receiver spot if he's going to challenge for a roster spot on this 2017 roster. Uh, a question coming in via Periscope from Trey Bay, does the, tack the lack of tackling in practice hinder the defense? Well, it didn't today. Today, I thought the defense looked really well going up against the first-team offense at the point of attack. They were moving along the line of scrimmage. Adama and Sue, Andre Branch, Cam Wake. The linebackers looked very strong with Raekwon McMillan, uh, the, the rookie out of Ohio State. He led the Buckeyes in back-to-back -back years in total tackles. It looks like he's a tackling machine at the next level. It's only been five days, but the guy's in the right spot at the right times, and I think it allows the Miami Dolphin defense to kick Kiko Alonso out to the weak side. And with the addition of Lawrence Timmons on the strong side, it bolsters this linebacking core, especially with the absence of Koamisi, which looks like he's going to be lost for the season with the neck injury and may uh, end his career as a Miami Dolphin <clears throat> with that injury. So the linebacking core 
as a group, has gotten a little bit better. I think Mike Hall is one of those guys that's gaining experience in his second year that can be counted on not only as a backup middle linebacker, but a guy that's very durable on special teams. So that entire group has improved. <clears throat> on the offensive side of the football, I really like what Ryan Tannehill has done with his leadership skills. I like the fact that he's taking control of this offense and he's better in year two in this Adam Gase called offense than he was even last year early in training camp. It looks like he has full control of what he wants to do. He hasn't been hindered by the knee injury, which is a good sign for Miami Dolphin fans. Even today during the scrimmage, he tucked the football down, ran when he had to on the zone read, uh, scrambling out of trouble, moving within the pocket. He looks very solid at the position and both he and Matt Moore throwing the football very effectively. Uh, in seven-on-seven drills, in team drills. Even though he had the interception in the red zone, Ryan Tannehill, through five days of training camp, looks to be anticipating to his wide receivers a little bit better than in previous years. Maybe that that second hesitation has gone and the ball, he's he's cutting it loose. So that's a good thing for the passing game. It looks like Jay Ajayi, before today's scrimmage, was hitting on all cylinders. He he left the practice. He started practice, started in the scrimmage, but left under his own power with an undisclosed injury. So it looked like he was held out of the second half of the practice. That's one of the things we'll need to follow up with Bo on Wednesday when he brings you the audible right here at 1030. But Kenyon Drake was his was the first guy in, the next man up as the Miami Dolphins found they had a lot last season. He's he got the majority of the reps and looked very good. His speed to the outside his instincts in the inside, hitting holes with quickness. That part of the running game looks very good. Damian Williams, uh, always to be counted on. That's a guy that has done very good in the passing game. And that's somewhere where Jay Ajayi has really picked up the slack in his game. He wants to be counted on as a three down back. So that's a good thing for the Miami Dolphins if they can have that. Another question via Periscope is from Kevin. Have you seen any difference with Coach Burke on the defensive side of the ball as the defensive coordinator? I've seen a little bit more intensity, to be honest with you, in the defense. I'm not so sure that has anything to do with changing coordinators, but you like to see Matt Burke's interaction with the players. I think his message is coming through loud and clear, and I think you'll see a little bit more pressure at the line of scrimmage. You'll see a little bit more of a Dolphin defense that's going downhill and hopefully improving from where they were last year against the run. If this defense is going to improve in any area to make this football team much better in 2017, they have to be able to stop the run. That was the the thing that really held them back last year. It wasn't points against. It was stopping and getting off the field and forcing teams in passing situations. And I think Another added dimension to this defense is the depth they have in the secondary. Although right now Rashad Jones is on the PUP, he's being held out with a minor injury, when he's inserted back into the lineup, that allows guys like Michael Thomas and and Walt Aikens, who's been experimenting at corner and at safety, a little bit more reps at their natural positions. And I think that you know Rashad and Byron Maxwell, Xavier Howard looks very healthy on the corner going into his second year. So I think the experience factor and guys getting some more playing time and more reps was going to help this defensive unit out, hopefully against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in that opener at Hard Rock Stadium on September 10th. So Through five days of training camp, it really looks good for the Miami Dolphins. Yes, they've been in shorts and helmets for the majority of the practices, but the last three days, uppers on on over the weekend and full pads today, they look talented. This is probably the most talented roster I've seen in the last eight to ten years that a Miami Dolphins team is going to roll into the season with, and they're going to have to be good starting at home against a very talented Tampa Bay Buccaneers team. So this is a team... That needs to start fast. We always talk about teams need to stay healthy. They have to have the next man up mentality, but they have to start fast as well. Big Papa with a question. The speed of practices looks faster this year. Am I right or am I wrong? I think you're right. I think this team is getting on the page of what Adam Gase wants them to be at at practice. He wants a high tempo, uh, you know, stay off the ground when told. But today, they got after it. They got after it the last three days. They've been in shoulder pads for two days over the weekends. Seems like the contact and the intensity ratcheted up a little bit. Today was definitely a full go practice, and you might see that again at the stadium, at Hard Rock Stadium, on Saturday coming up 
with a full scrimmage, a controlled scrimmage, but I think you'll see more of what the Dolphins will look like as they roll into the preseason. So those are good things to look forward to. And one of the things I think closing uh, with the Audible today, and remember, Bo will be back around 1030, so you can put that on your calendar on Wednesday for the Audible. I'm sure he'll have another player guest uh, coming at you. Hopefully this one will be on the offensive side so we can get their perspective. But I think in closing, the team speed, the team is in shape. They look ready to go. They look like they've installed a bunch of new formations, plays offensively, defensively. They're getting a good rotation at the corner, at linebacker spot. They're getting young players in and probably at a position of need. We haven't really talked about the defensive tackle position, but those types of players like Vincent Taylor and Devon Gotchow, they're going to have to really step up as young players to be counted on or they're going to be looking uh, for more talent at that position. So I just think overall this team – Offensively, they're right where they want to be in terms of install, in terms of the way the passing game is looking today and the running game look good. And defensively, I like the way they're flying around to the football. So a lot of good things through five days of practice for the Miami Dolphins. And that's going to do it for today's Audible. Remember, Bo will be back 1030 on Wednesday for the next edition of the Audible. I'm John Kinjemi. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for all the questions via Periscope. And Bo will be back at you on Wednesday at 1030.